Welcome, welcome, welcome to Daddy Bits, our trade ideas program, hosted by yours truly, the ugly one. And as always, my amazing co-host, Teflon John. Tefleezy, fo sheezy. Hey, Tefleezy, are we back in the easy? <laughs> Remember that diamonds are made by pressure, and we have been tested for the past two months. All of our deep conviction plays have been printing, and uh, we're going to present a few more for you guys today, and make sure that you guys keep these in your watch list because the money printer always goes burr. With that being said, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button, hit the post notification bell, give us a preemptive thumbs up if you guys like this content, drop down in the comment section below the stocks that you guys want us to cover. With that being said, let's get to the episode. The money printer went burr. Question. Answer. Hey, did you watch that Tesla video? I did watch that Tesla video. And you know what happened to that Tesla video? It's funny because we dropped it Sunday. And what happened? What happened we today? Did. What happened yesterday? What did happen yesterday? Well, yesterday. It's not like we don't talk about this stuff. No, it's uh, the, the market really humbled me in the past couple months. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but it, in all honesty, t today was a uh, uh, you know one a, a record day. Um, my previous record was what twelve grand in a day, right? But you broke twelve bands today. Yeah, dude, I was close to fourteen. <laughs> you, you you hit fourteen bands today. Yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations! So you know what we're gonna do with those with the profit? Yolo calls. Yolo calls. <laughs> No, we're gonna play it smarter, bro. We're, we're gonna buy shares. We're 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 gonna reinvest it back in the um the pot. So definitely, definitely. Always remember Boring that stuff. you take your profits and you reinvest them into you know the more high conviction plays. Um, if you guys see profits already, make sure that um if you guys aren't taking profits, make sure you, make sure that you guys have a plan for that play, an exit strategy. So that when you do lose or the position kind of pulls back a little bit, you're not thinking, oh, crap, I'm going to panic sell. Remember, each trade has a purpose. Do not buy into the hype. Always remember that each and every single stock that you buy always has a reason why you're buying it. You don't go around buying cheapo candy because it's delicious. You know what I mean? Every single stock has a story. So uh, let's get into the market conditions for today. Uh, let's take a look at the queue real quick. John, what happened to the queue? The well, what happened with um, with the boomer stocks? <clears throat> uh, Johnson and Johnson today announced. Well, they announced it uh, earlier before market opens that um, the vaccine had some issues. It had, like also, point, it had like a point zero 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 eight chance of you getting a blood clot. So here's the thing. I just I got my vaccine on Sunday. Mm -hmm. right, I got the Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my first shot. And yesterday it felt like I got hit with it like by a ton of bricks. Like my body was in pain. Really? Right? It hurt. But I'm 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 feeling a lot better today. Uh also, Johnson and Johnson, don't you guys make lotion? Dude, they they make a, a lot of things. It's a four hundred billion market cap. They I know them for in, lotion. Yeah, <laughs> talcum powder, um, baby powder. They sell a lot of things. Also, it was a it was, and and the reason why I wasn't really gung ho about the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is because they were saying that the efficacy is like a lot lower. I don't know. Yeah, that that really affected. Uh, that was the headline of the markets today. Mm -hmm. It was a lot lower, and then you only needed one shot. But while Moderna and Pfizer can give you like around the nineties level in terms of efficacy, yeah. and you need two shots. Yeah. So interestingly, how come J and J doesn't get that kind of like 
requirement in order for you to be cleared. You know, I mean, again, um, just a PSA getting the vaccine doesn't mean that you could rummage like run around town with your, with your mask off. Remember other people still haven't gotten the vaccine and other people will not get the vaccine because of personal reasons. Right. Uh, but if you are vaccinated make sure that you guys still wear a mask, um, and, 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 uh, still try to stay as safe as possible. Right. Getting the vaccine isn't a license to go nuts. Um, but the queue actually led the day today, right? Yeah, it did by a percent, more than a Definitely. percent. Definitely. And I, and I think um, we might sideways action tomorrow. What do you think? Um, I mean, I do think the uh, the market's going to be sideways. Uh, but look at Q's. Q's has legs. And I think, I think there's some leftovers tomorrow. There could be. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, we're looking yeah. a little flat for futures tomorrow. <laughs> Because spy is overbought. Yeah, spy okay. is overbought. Spy is definitely overbought. Let's take a look at spy actually. And if you look at the Dow, looks like it's going to come down. It's going to, well, I don't want to say dip, but you know. Yeah, but who cares about the Dow? Who cares about, you know, Dow? I don't, I don't care. I honestly don't care about the Dow. <laughs> Let's take a look at the spy. The spy, uh, it wasn't as flat as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, again, if you take a quick look at the RSI right there, it is overbought right around these levels right here. So if it goes sideways, thank you. Uh, at least that would give us a little bit of a pause before we go back up. And this is what kind of scares me is this gap right here. Yeah, just wait for it. I mean, it's going to come down in yeah. May. <laughs> it may come down. It may come down, right? Let's take a look at the uh, spy futures. Yep, a little flat, a little flat. We'll see. We'll see. There's still a lot more time before you know, um, before tomorrow. So we'll definitely watch. We'll keep that on watch. The stock that we want to cover first and foremost is Neo. Neo looks good, man. Dude, Neo looks solid. Neo yeah. looks pretty. So we drew this wedge uh, a few episodes ago about Neo right around here. Yeah, you can right? take that off now because we could definitely take that off because it kind of broke right here, right? Yeah. But as you see, the wedge works. The yeah. wedge definitely works. <clears throat> and we definitely see Neo breaking out right around these levels. Um, and it's still running. If we take a look at it, yeah, it's still running. Right? It's uh, 38.90 right now. So it's going to gap up tomorrow. So it, do expect it to open, you know, maybe around 39.10, uh, right in between uh, the EMA 9 and the 20. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, you know, this has a good chance to, to actually run all the way to, what, 39.90, 40. Yep. That's yep. your ceiling right there. Your, your floor is 38.50, which where it ended today. Yep. The volume was all right. I mean, it was a normal day. Um, 3%, you know, Neo moves about 3, 4% a day. A day, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's like a normal day, you know. Nothing yeah. unusual. Nothing just on the on a technical basis, it did break out of that wedge, so we're a little bit more yeah. bullish. And some news actually dropped that mm -hmm. there may be some um a catalyst tomorrow. They're going to do like a live signing of um of their agreement with Sinopec. Sinopec is a, um, a large petroleum conglomerate in China. Yeah. And what their plan is, is to have um, Neo battery swap stations in each uh, gas station yeah. around the expressway in, um, in Beijing. So that's... That's huge. That's huge, especially if you have a uh, because the biggest issue right now in terms of EV is is range, right? Range has always been an issue, so that kind of addresses it. Especially if you're if you're bullish on Neo, that's a really great news. We're definitely going to see some uh, some more here, and and we have dude, we're we're barely just scratching the surface. If we take a look at Neo, um. If you take a look at Neo, it still hasn't broken. And that right there, this neckline right there, that W-shaped recovery, we're still going to have to break that. All-time highs is, what, 64? 
So I think there's more here. No, 67. 67? Yeah, yeah. there's more. Yeah. There's definitely more. Another stock that John wants to talk about is Tilray. John, what do you see on Tilray? Um, so Tilray's been uh, been beaten up uh, in the past month or so. If you guys look at the uh, the one month chart, um, came down from you know as high as thirty one, um, all the way to uh, right now um, lowest today. It hit the lowest today at sixteen twenty eight. Um, so as you can see, it took uh, pretty much a uh, you know a fifty percent haircut, right? Like w within mm -hmm. within a month or so. Um, if you look at the um, the chart on this one, we're we're focusing on the uh, the one month chart right here. Um, you know, MACD has potential. RSI is you know somewhat beaten up. But what uh, strike me the most on this one is the uh, the the bullish engulfing. Bullish engulfing is when uh, so today's candle, okay, which was actually a, a nice candle. It almost hammered, but somewhat it did. But it you know it overtakes the uh, the previous day okay it kind of eats that candle from from yesterday's candle and i do see this you know hidden at least you know 1980 right yeah you see how uh today's candle just basically engulfs that's the keyword engulfs eats up the uh, the previous day so this one tomorrow this one has potential and tilray is known for you know massive swings uh, as you can see, you know, from 31 to 16, that's that's damn near 50%. Mm -hmm. um, but for this one, I do see a uh, continuation. There is a huge resistance at, you know, 20, 1995, right there um, on the nine. Mm -hmm. And then really, I'm looking into um, maybe doing a, a two month or a three month out uh, calls on these. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how tomorrow goes. Yeah. Uh, if tomorrow doesn't look good, or if let's say it breaks, you know, today's lows, then obviously it's not ready yet. Um, but pot stock's been beaten up, especially because of uh, ticker symbol APHA um, didn't do so well with their earnings. That's why, you know, the, the whole industry somewhat like took a beat down in the past, you know, few days. Um, but yeah, for this one, I, I definitely see this um, hidden, you know, at least 20 tomorrow. Uh, it does have a, a higher probability of hitting that. Exercise caution when you guys are going into these plays because yeah, it is a beating down stock. It is, um, it is. How do you say this? It is juicy looking, yeah. right? But remember that if you guys get into the play too soon, there always have a plan. If if you go in too soon and it doesn't go your way, hope that you sized appropriately that yeah. you average down. Again, not financial advice. This is something that John and I exercise ourselves. Yeah, We do this when we get into a play too soon. We'll admit to that, the fact that we get in too soon, and then we'll average down. We start small. We end up going a little bit bigger because it's the position kind of gets bigger as we create more conviction into the plays, just like how we did with Tesla, where it turned from it became from one call to five. <laughs> And how my neo position went from from two calls to twenty. <laughs> average, average down, boys. <laughs> oh man, average down, definitely average down. Uh, the, uh, one of the other stocks that we do want to talk about today is our favorite stock of all time, Palantir. God. Oh my god. I just want to say this it. might be it. I love it. Because just like just like the um just like the the Tilray the Tilray chart, right? You guys saw that barrier that bullish engulfing. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the same exact thing right here. Yeah, it's it's not so much of a, a bullish engulfing because uh it, it's not swallowing the entire, you know, previous day. Oh yeah, so, because of this wick. All right, you're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah, the, the lower wick it hit yep. uh 22 70 or something, 69. And uh, today we didn't even touch that. But what's significant about today is um, it blew through three resistances. Okay. Yep. It blew through the nine, the 20, and the 50. All right. And you guys probably think that, you know, we're just making this stuff up, right? Like when it comes to all these lines, like, you know, what the hell is a, a red, red line, green line, and, and a white line, right? But if you look at March 16th on the one month chart, 
Okay, click on one month. No, this is the one month right here. Okay, look at look at what happened March sixteenth. Okay, right here. It bounced off of the nine. It got rejected on the fifty, and like it stayed in the middle. We're mm -hmm. not making this stuff up. Like you know, exponential moving averages. This is what I use. You know, like uh, it's my bread and butter. And basically, you can set your 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 buys, your entry, mm -hmm. and your exit, your sell point. Okay, so March sixteenth. Seriously, you could have bought the floor and sold the ceiling, mm -hmm. and would have you, you know you know you would have had a clean entry and, and a solid exit point. Yep, yep, yep. So today it broke through three resistances. Okay, one was at you know twenty three seventy, the other was twenty three or twenty four, and then you know the fifty was at twenty four ninety five. Uh, I didn't think it was going to break it, but um, they do have a an event for tomorrow, so that's why people are, are, are I guess, loading up, um, you know, to, I guess, sell the news. So you, you also got to be cautious because tomorrow's um, uh, one of their uh, double click days. Yep. Yeah. So it might be uh, sell the news, but really support is at twenty four ninety five. If that breaks, really majority of the times uh, the twenty or the nine holds. So. Uh, don't be surprised if we see, you know, 2385 again or 24. Um, but really, I would be loading uh, when it when it hits that. Yeah, you know, I'm actually is... looking into uh, leap calls now because of this click demo click event. Yeah, by uh, I should have I should have started a new position on Palantir in terms of uh, just a smaller uh, set of options just for the catalyst. Um, and then just sell it off and then wait for another um, level of support before loading on another set of leaps for uh, 2023. But I think it's time to start looking at the 2023 calls if you are building a position. Um, my my play on this is I am trying to acquire as many shares that I can. And the best way to do that is to do leap calls and I could exercise at the end or close to where it's it has enough equity that it pays for itself. Um, and, and that's just my personal opinion on Palantir. And I'm pretty sure John kind of shares the same, um, yeah. very similar, uh, position. What, um, what you want to watch over here is the, um, the nine and the 20 on the, uh, the one month chart, you know, if, if, if it all goes well, that crossover, once it crosses the 50, yeah, do it again. No, 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 no. I don't think we got that on. Did we get that on? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. So once it crosses the once it crosses the fifty, what does it do? <laughs> we saw that with Tesla today. We did. We did see that with Tesla. <laughs> and and then in the middle of the day, John calls me and he goes, "What are you, are you watching this?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm watching it. I'm watching it, John." <laughs> I'm over here uh, buying a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> lobster. <laughs> But oh, that's man. it. That's it. Yeah, definitely it. That's definitely it. Um, Rob, if you're watching this, we haven't forgotten about you. It's just yeah. a jam packed day to day. Uh, we'll get into Micron uh, tomorrow. Uh, we do promise you that. But see, the thing is, I mean, we can break it down real quick. So Micron, oh, okay. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get into Micron. It, it's it broke support. Um, you know, chips right now are not you know a hot sector right now. You know, NVIDIA is, but really AMD's lagging, MU's lagging, Intel's obviously beaten down. So I, I wouldn't get in, I wouldn't be so hot with that industry right now. Yeah. Yeah. There, but, there's plenty of chart, other plays. Yeah. This chart's kind of busted for us. Yeah. Uh, look at the MACD, it's, it's about to yeah, cross that, down. That's, that's going to come down. Um, you know, I mean, it'll bounce, but we do see the 50 again. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. All yeah. right. And I think that is it for today's episode. So if you guys like this and like all of this, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button, hit the post notification bell, give us a nice thumbs up if you guys like the video. And uh make sure that you guys drop the comments on the section below what the stocks you guys want us to cover. Right? Follow us on all our social media. Follow me at Trading Poppy, follow John at John C Trades, follow us both at Trading Daddies, tradingdaddies.com for all your news and your merch. Robin Hood sucks, 15% off the entire store. With that being said, let's get trading. Yeah. And remember that the charts do not lie. <laughs>